In this video, you will learn how to sort the elements of an array with the bubble sort algorithm. I will demonstrate the bubble sort with this project that you can program with me. If you are new here, first go and watch lesson 17.1 to 17.7 to get a better understanding of arrays. In the application we will create today, you have two list boxes. The first list box must display an array that contains the names of rugby nations that participated in the 2019 Rugby World Cup. The second list box must display the elements of the array sorted in ascending order. Hi, it's Gerard here from Learn Delphi. I'm a trainer in programming languages and in this series, I help you to understand Delphi programming step by step and line by line. If this video is helpful to you, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And I also publish all the links I mention in this video in the description box below. In all our lessons, I start with the code immediately. I do not demonstrate how to create the graphical user interface. That is so that you only focus on the code of the lesson we are doing. If you want to follow what I'm doing but you want to save some time, you can download the starter project to start immediately where I start with this lesson. The starter and solution project files are available for download from my Patreon page at patreon.com slash learndelphi. I also posted that link in the description. And I'm using Delphi Community Edition to demonstrate these lessons. There's also a link in the description if you want to download the free copy of Delphi. You can pause the video here and go do the downloads. I will go ahead and explain the bubble sort algorithm while you wait for the downloads to finish. Let's see how the algorithm for a bubble sort will look. Let's assume our array stores the names of rugby nations that participated in the 2019 Rugby World Cup. To perform a bubble sort, your code must loop through the array while keeping track of a few values. You must have a temporary variable to help you to swap two elements of the array. If you attempt to swap two values directly, you will overwrite the first value and it will be lost. The temporary variable will prevent that from happening. If you first assign the first value to the temp variable, it will be buffered for a while and it can be remembered later. Now you can overwrite the first value with the second one. The first value is not lost because you saved it in the temp variable. So now you can write it back to the second position to complete the swap. You will also need a boolean variable to keep track when two values are swapped. This boolean is a flag that indicates if the loop must continue with more cycles. You also need an integer variable to keep track of the number of times your loop enters a cycle. Every new cycle through the array is called the pass. This variable is used to reduce the cycles of a loop every time the elements of an array ends up in the correct position. That will make your code more efficient because it avoids unnecessary processing. You also need an integer variable to keep track of the indices of the array. This will be the counter variable of a for loop. Now let's look at the algorithm. It will start with a repeat until loop. We must enter the loop at least one time to determine if the array is already sorted or not. And that is why we use a repeat loop. This loop will continue cycling until the flag is false at the end of the cycle. When the loop starts, we assume the array is not sorted. So we set the boolean to false. This is the first pass. So we increase the integer that keeps track of the passes. A pass is a full cycle from top to bottom. The algorithm then enters a for loop. It starts counting from 1 and the upper limit of the loop is the size of the array minus the number of passes. The size of our array is 4. And the number of passes at the moment is 1. 4 minus 1 is 3. So the loop will cycle from 1 to 3. Index 1 is South Africa. Now keep your eyes on South Africa and see how it drops down to position 4 as we cycle through the array. Inside the for loop, we have an if statement that checks if the value of the current index is greater than the value of the next index in the array. So in this example, we compare if South Africa is greater than Canada. South Africa is greater than Canada. So we must swap South Africa and Canada. We first set the boolean variable to true to indicate that the swap is about to happen. Then we must perform a swap. We cannot move South Africa directly into index 2 because you will overwrite Canada and Canada will be lost. You can also not move Canada up to index 1. It will overwrite South Africa and it will be lost. The swapping must happen in the three steps I explained a few seconds ago. You must first assign the value in the first index to the temporary variable to buffer it for a while. So South Africa is saved into the temp variable. Now you can overwrite South Africa with Canada. That is the second step. Then the last step in the three step swap is to take the value in the temp variable and assign it to the second index. Now Canada bubbled one index up and South Africa moved one spot down. This is the end of the if statement, but the for loop is not done with its work yet. The compiler jumps back to the inner loop and assigns 2 to int index. Index 2 is South Africa. Then the if statement checks if the value in index 2 is greater than the value in index 3. South Africa must go after New Zealand, so we must perform a swap again. 
The flag is set to true again, and South Africa is written to the temp variable. The value in the next index, New Zealand in this example, moves up and overrides South Africa, and South Africa in the temp variable is written back into the next index of the array. So New Zealand bubbled up one position and South Africa moved one position down. That is the end of the if statement, but the for loop still has some work to do. The compiler jumps back to the for loop and assigns 3 to int index. Index 3 is South Africa. Then the if statement checks if the value in index 3 is greater than the value in index 4. South Africa must go after Australia, so we must perform a swap again. The flag is set to true again, and South Africa is written to the temp variable. The value in the next index, Australia in this example, moves up and overrides South Africa, and South Africa in the temp variable is written back into the next index of the array. So Australia bubbled up one position, and South Africa moved one position down. I want you to also keep your eyes on Australia during this whole process. Australia must bubble up to position 1 as we continue through this algorithm. This is the end of the if statement. South Africa moved from the first position in the array to the last position. So South Africa is now in its final position, and we don't have to look at it again in future cycles. The inner loop is also done with its work, and this is the end of the first pass. The boolean is true. In other words, we had one or more swaps during the first pass. If that is the case, the compiler must jump back to repeat the whole process. The flag is set back to false. Then we increase the pass count. This is the second pass. The for loop starts at the first index again. In this example it is Canada, and the upper bound is the size of the array minus the number of passes. That is 4 minus 2, so the loop must cycle from 1 to 2. The if statement checks if the value in index 1 is greater than the value of index 2. Canada is not greater than New Zealand, so the if statement will end, and all these statements will be ignored. The compiler jumps back to the inner loop and assigns 2 to int index. Index 2 is New Zealand. Then the if statement checks if the value in index 2 is greater than the value in index 3. New Zealand must go after Australia, so we must perform another swap. The flag is set to true again, and New Zealand is written to the temp variable. The value in the next index, Australia in this example, moves up and overrides New Zealand, and New Zealand in the temp variable is written back to the next index of the array. So Australia bubbled up one more position, and New Zealand moved one position down. That is the end of the if statement. The for loop doesn't have to look at the last element, because South Africa is already in its place. And now New Zealand is also in its final spot. The inner loop is also done for now. That is the end of the second pass. The boolean is true, so this condition is not met, and the compiler must jump back to the top and repeat the whole process. The boolean is set back to false. The number of passes increments to 3. The for loop finds Canada. The if statement checks if the value in index 1 is greater than the value in index 2. Canada must go after Australia, so we must perform a swap again. The boolean is set back to true. Canada is written to the temp variable. Australia overrides Canada in index 1. And Canada in the temp variable is written back into position 2 of the array. Now Australia bubbled up one more spot, and Canada moved one position down. Notice how Australia bubbled up from position 4 to position 1 like the bubbles in a glass of Coca-Cola. Canada is also now in its final position. That means the array is now sorted, but the algorithm must continue until all the conditions are met. This is the end of the if statement, and the end of the inner loop. The process is not done yet. The boolean is still true because the last cycle performed the swap. The compiler will jump back to the top to repeat the whole process. Then the boolean is set back to false. The number of passes increase. This is the fourth pass. The for loop starts back at 1, and it doesn't have any loops to do, so it exits immediately. This confirms that Australia is already in its final position. The boolean is still false, because we didn't perform swaps. If no swaps are performed during a pass, the array is sorted, and the algorithm is done. There are two important things to understand here. The outer loop must enter at least once to determine if an array is sorted or not. That is why we use a repeat loop that only evaluates the boolean at the end of a pass. Secondly, if a whole pass can complete without performing one or more swaps, your array is fully sorted. Now let's see how this can be done in a project. Here I have my project open in Delphi. If your download finished, open the starter project and follow what I'm doing. Double click the button on the left of the form. Scroll up a little bit. 
Here under the implementation clause, I already declared and populated a string array. The name of the array is ARR Rugby, and it has 20 elements that store the rugby playing nations that participated in the 2019 Rugby World Cup. The contents in the array are unsorted. Go back to the buttons click event handler. Go between the procedure header and the begin statement. Type var. Press enter and type str rugby nation as string. This string variable must store each individual country name as we loop through the array. Go between begin and end. Type lst unsorted rugby nations dot clear. We start by clearing this list box. Make a new line. Type for str rugby nation in arr rugby do. Press enter. Type begin. Press enter again. Type the statement. Here we use a for in loop and then we add each individual country name to the unsorted list box. Run the program. Click the button on the left. The list box must show the 20 names of the rugby playing countries. Notice the names are not sorted in this list box. Now let's do a bubble sort. Close the form. Click the design tab. Double click the button on the right side of the form. Go above begin. Type var. Enter and type int passes, comma int index, comma int country count as integer. int passes stores the loop count of the repeat until loop. int index is the counter for the for loop. And int country count stores the element count of the array. Press enter and type bln swapped as boolean. This boolean is a flag that indicates if a swap was performed during a pass. Press enter, type str temp, comma str country name as string. str temp is a string that must buffer a country name when we perform a swap. And str country name must store each individual country name as we loop through the array, like we did here in the first button. Go between begin and end. Type bt in sorted rugby nations dot enabled colon equals false. We disable this button. Enter and type lst sorted rugby nations dot clear. We clear this list box. Enter again and type int passes colon equals zero. We start the loop count at zero. Enter and type int country count colon equals length and arr rugby between brackets. Here we get the size of the array and store it in an integer variable. Make a new line, type repeat and press enter. Go after until and type bln swapped equals false. This loop will perform the passes. Remember we use a repeat loop because we want to always enter the loop at least once to determine if the array is sorted or not. Go inside the loop. Type bln swapped. Colon equals false. We start every pass assuming no swaps took place. Enter and type this statement. Here we increase the number of passes the algorithm performs. Enter and type for int index colon equals one two int country count minus int passes do press enter and type begin enter again this for loop starts at one and its upper limit is the size of the array minus the number of passes that we performed already now type this if statement Enter and type begin. 
Enter again. This if statement checks if the value of the current index of the array is greater than the value in the next index. Type BLN swapped. Colon equals true. If the if statement's condition is true, we flag a swap by making the boolean true. Enter and type this comment. Now let's swap the values in the elements. Enter and type str temp colon equals arr rugby and int index between square brackets. Here we buffer the value in the first index in str temp. Enter and type this statement. We move the next element one position up to overwrite the first element. Enter and type this statement. Here we get the value that was in the first element that is now stored in the temporary variable and we assign it to the next element. To avoid confusion with all these statements, you can write these comments. This one is to enter if statement and this one is to enter for loop. Now we must display the output in a list box. Make a new line under until, type for, str country name, in arr rugby, do, enter and type begin, enter again, and type this statement. We use a for in loop again to list the elements in the sorted array in the list box. Now run the program. Click the button on the left. The list box displays the rugby nations stored in an unsorted array. Now click the button on the right. This list box displays the same array, but it is sorted in ascending order. Now let's go back to the code and see how difficult it is to sort the array in descending order. Close the form. Go to the if statement and change the greater than symbol to less than. That's all you need to change the sort order from ascending to descending. Now let's test it. Run again. Click the left button. Now click the sort button. Now the country names are listed from Wales to Argentina. And that is how you program a bubble sort. If this was too much, play the video again and look carefully at my explanation at the beginning. You may need to slow down the video and look at each step in detail. You can copy paste this algorithm or memorize the steps for future projects where you need to use a bubble sort. You can also sort arrays of other data types, but remember to also make the temp variable the same data type as the contents of your array. You can now close your form and save your project. Next time, we will look at another type of sort algorithm called the select sort. If you enjoyed this lesson, please leave a comment. And if you learned something new, please like, subscribe and share my lessons with your friends. Thank you for watching. And a special thank you to my supporters on Patreon.com. And happy coding. See you next time.